Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna be replacing the timing belt on my BMW E30. So if you guys actually take a look behind me, I actually have the hood off the car right now because this is actually gonna make this job a lot easier because obviously you're working at the front of the engine. So just to free up a lot more space and to make it a lot more comfortable. And so you guys can actually see what's going on. I took off the hood. I do already have the radiator out, so I do have a small head start to the timing belt, I guess, but I mean, the radiator is very easy to take out. It's two 10 millimeter bolts and two clips, and then just undoing the hoses and just taking all the coolant out. But since I already have the radiator out, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started with um, removing the fan clutch. So I believe this is a 32 millimeter wrench. You're gonna need a thin one like this. I got this set off of Amazon, so um, I'll go ahead and uh, link it down below if you guys wanna use the same ones, but it's gonna make everything a lot easier as far as removing the fan clutch. So the fan clutch is actually um, reverse threaded, so, so instead of uh, loosening it to the left, you're gonna have to do it to the right. <sighs> I'll unplug the spark plug wires from the distributor cap and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just label them so just do one one Now remove the cap, it's uh, three eight millimeter bolts. Now we can remove the rotor. Um, it's held in by three uh, three millimeter Allen uh, headed bolts. So just go ahead and uh, remove those. All right, so now moving on to taking off all the drive belts, we're gonna start off by removing the power steering belt. Um, I apologize if you guys can't really see, it. it's kind of a hard angle to get, but let's start off by loosening the 13 millimeter nut on the back. Now on the bottom of the car, uh, we're looking at the power steering pump right here. There is uh, three other bolts and nuts that we need to just loosen up. I think there's one up here, one bolt. Um, another bolt right here and I think another bolt on that end right there. So just go ahead and uh, loosen those up. Just loosen them, do not remove them. Right. I'm gonna put this uh, pry bar right here on the on the pump and see if we can move it out a little bit. There we go. Moving on to the AC compressor belt, there is a uh, 13 millimeter bolt with a 13 millimeter knot on the other end. So we're at the counter hold it with the wrench. So I already have my wrench on there. And now we can loosen it. That should be good. And on the bottom of the AC compressor, there is two more 13 millimeter nuts that we need to just loosen up. So just these two right here. Just loosen it, but do not remove it. Let's do the other one. And the one closest to the oil pan, um, we're gonna have to counter hold it because that one actually has a bolt on the other end that is not spline like the first one. So just loosen it and we should be good. I should take off most of the tension from the belt. So, and there it is, the belt's off. Moving on to the belt for the alternator. Um, we're gonna loosen up this top bolt right here. We'll just do that, just with that. We'll start off right there, and then uh, we're gonna loosen up the other bolt, which you guys are probably not gonna be able to see on camera, but it's right here above the power steering pump. There's a 13 millimeter bolt right there that we're gonna loosen up. So just loosen it, 
Do not remove it. Now grab the 19 millimeter and we're gonna put it on the adjustment bolt. All right, so turn it to the right hand side and that's gonna take off tension from the belt. So go a little bit more. I managed to take off a lot of tension off the belt. As you guys can see, it's kind of loose, but it still needs a little bit more to go to actually get it off the pulleys. But um, the bull got kind of hard and I don't want to risk um, stripping the teeth on it. So I'm just going to get a screwdriver and All right, so up next is actually gonna be removing the timing cover, but we have to actually take off this bracket right here, which um, is the tensioner one, which is held in by a 13 millimeter nut right here. And then we have the 19 millimeter bolt right here with the 13 millimeter nut on that end. So let's go ahead and take it off. Now we can remove the timing covers. So I'm just gonna undo these plastics here. They're just uh, clipped on and this bracket comes off. And then uh, we have this sensor. We can just take off. And now we have a 13 millimeter bolt right here and a 10 millimeter bolt right here. It's not too bad, but it was starting to crack. So it has some very, very small cracks. I don't even think the camera picks it up, but it looks a little dry rotted, but I've seen some belts that are a lot worse and the cracks are actually a lot more visible on it. But um, this one, I want to say it's probably been on there for at least like four or five years, but it's nothing too crazy. But at the same time, you know, it's better to just have it replaced and know when it's been replaced and just have that peace of mind that you have a brand new belt on there and just not have to worry about it later down the road with like, you know, potential engine damage. I know the valves could get damaged on the ETA models, which is what I have. So, um, you know, it's important to just make sure it gets replaced and just just knowing when um, the timing belt was done. But now it's time to remove the accessory pulley and the crankshaft pulley. There is six 13 millimeter bolts inside of there. It's really hard to capture this angle. So um, there, I'll just show you guys a picture of what it looks like, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take them off. I got the front pulley out. Now we can take off the uh, crankshaft pulley or harmonic balancer, whatever you want to call it. And this one should just slide right out. <sighs> Might take some wiggling, but there it is. Now we can remove the lower timing cover, which is held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Before I can get to removing the timing ball off the engine, we have to set the engine to top dead center, referencing the timing marks that um, the engine has. It's gonna have two. Um, so there's this little mark right here by this dowel pin. You guys probably can't see it on camera, but I'll include a picture on the screen. And uh, you wanna line up this mark with either a mark that you're gonna have on the cam sprocket itself. I'll show you guys what that looks like. This is a later model um, cam sprocket. And I don't know if the camera picks it up that well, but there's a little mark right here um, which is used to uh, line it up to get the top dead center right. And on some models, it's gonna have a little arrow on this uh, inner piece of plastic right here. Mine, unfortunately, doesn't have either. So it's gonna be one of those three options, I guess. You're gonna either have it on the cam sprocket, on this inner plastic, or you're not gonna have it. I believe the one that doesn't have it is only a 1987 325 model that is not badged uh, E or I, just simply 325. I really don't know why. I don't have an answer for that, which is kind of weird. This is the reason why I'm gonna be upgrading to a later model one. So I'm gonna be taking this one off and just upgrading it with this one. So. Uh, later down the road when I do change the timing belt, um, it's going to be a lot easier and not to mention that these are actually prone to failure. So it's a good uh, time to upgrade it if you guys also have 
um, the same thing that I do, which doesn't have the mark on the plastic or on the cam sprocket, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But I'll show you guys right now how I'm gonna set this engine to top dead center. On the bottom, there's another mark that needs to be aligned as well. It's very important that the top one and the bottom one are both lined up. If they're not, just continue turning the crank until they are both lined up. But on my car specifically, I have a little line where the harmonic balancer gets mounted to. And a little past the harmonic balancer, I have a little triangle cut out and that's where that line is gonna get lined up to. So since mine doesn't have the timing reference mark either on the camshaft sprocket or on this inner plastic right here, I'm gonna have to line it up a different way and that's gonna be doing the screwdriver method. So I have the spark plug off on cylinder one and I'm gonna stick the screwdriver in there. Just make sure you're very, very careful and it doesn't like just get wedged in there when you're turning the crank. So just kind of hold it. Um, now we're gonna grab a 22 millimeter and we're gonna turn the crank. And what we're gonna do is uh, look out for um, the crank and just make sure that it gets lined up with that little triangle groove right there. So um, kind of hold the screwdriver up so it doesn't get stuck in there and just turn the crank and line it up. So now that the mark is getting closer down here on the crank, it's almost uh, close to getting lined up with the little triangle groove. The only way to know that it's gonna be at top dead center is this screwdriver is gonna rise up. And as soon as it stops rising up and, and this mark down here is lined up with the little groove, that's how you know that the camshaft is at top dead center on cylinder one. So I'm gonna continue turning it. And now look at the screwdriver, it's gonna, it's gonna go up. You can see it's going up, almost there. And a little bit more and we'll be at top dead center. Now that we have the camshaft and the crankshaft aligned, I'm gonna be taking off this sprocket and I'm gonna be upgrading it to the later one. Um, as I said, these are a little bit weaker. It's a good, um, thing to upgrade as you guys are doing your timing belt if you guys have an early model one um, that is not as beefy as this one so gonna be upgrading it all right so now I'm gonna loosen up the bolt for um, the camshaft sprocket so mine specifically is an eight millimeter allen um, I know on the later model ones like the sprocket that I'm gonna be upgrading to um, it's an actual bolt that has a e14 head so it's a reverse e torx um, e14 so if you guys are doing your camshaft seal um, that bolt is an E14 on the later model uh, 325. So I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and uh, crack this loose. I'm not gonna remove it. I just wanna loosen it up just to make things a lot easier, so. Now we can start relieving tension from the belt by uh, removing the tensioner. There's supposed to be a spring in between um, the water pump, a spring and a guide pin in between the water pump and the tensioner itself, but for some reason I don't have it. So just be careful when you take off your tensioner, um, that spring or guide pin can easily fall. So just uh, make sure you're looking out for it. So there's a 13 millimeter bolt up here. So let's go ahead and remove that one. And now with a 17 millimeter wrench, we're gonna remove the hinge bolt. And now that should uh, free up a lot of slack on the belt. We can uh, remove the tensioner now. And now we can just start working it out towards the bottom. Um, it's gonna be a little bit harder, so it's gonna take a lot of wiggling and on this uh, bottom part of the crank right here, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but just wiggle it out and it should come right out. Here's a close up of the belt. Uh, I'm not sure the camera picks it up that well, but super dry rotted and even on the inside as well, cracking. It was definitely that time to get this belt replaced. Next, I'm gonna remove the water pump. I'm obviously gonna be replacing it. I mean, if you're this far into this job, you might as well just replace your water pump and just not have to deal with it later. So um, here is the orientation of the water pump. It's normally like this on the car. Like that. So this is where all the bolts are at. So you have one right there. They're all 13 millimeter, one up top, and then uh, two on the bottom. 
So just so you guys see the orientation of the bolts. And it's probably gonna throw out a lot of uh, coolant, so just make sure you have like a bucket down there to um, catch all the coolant. And yep, a ton of coolant came out, but luckily everything landed inside of the bucket. This side of the water pump, you guys can actually see there's this little U shape right here. This is actually where the spring and the guide pin are supposed to sit that come from the tensioner. Um, I know mine didn't come with one, but I'm actually just gonna go ahead and uh, place an order tonight and just get that guide pin and that spring and just put it on there. Might as well just do it right while you know we're this far into the job. Now I'm gonna get to the camshaft seal. Um, the camshaft seal is behind um, the camshaft sprocket, so we have to take it off. Either way, I have to upgrade this to um, the newer style one, so I have to take it off anyway. So uh, mine's an eight millimeter Allen. If you guys are doing it on a later model E30, I believe it's an E14 reverse torque, so. Might take a little bit of wiggling, maybe hit it with a rubber mallet, but I think it should come right out. There it is. And the camshaft seal's right there. The camshaft seal is held in by two 10 millimeter bolts on both ends, so just go ahead and remove those real fast. get the o-ring off obviously before we install the new seal um, we're gonna have to clean this housing out a little bit there's a lot of oil in there so just try to get as much off as you can so I'm gonna use some brake cleaner and just try to wipe it down Now we can install the new O-ring. Just like that, and our camshaft seal. It's not a bad idea to actually lubricate the camshaft seal before we um, put it into the housing, just so it goes in pretty easy. So just get some oil. Now we can put the camshaft seal in. Try to get it in by hand, but we'll probably need a socket <laughs> to press it all the way in. It's off just a little bit. I'm gonna use this uh, 30 millimeter um, socket to actually just drive it in a bit more. Lightly tap it with the mallet. A little bit more. Yeah. 
and just double check that it's seated all the way in. Now is the perfect time to clean your engine as much as you can. I try to get as much as I could off. I wiped off most of the grime. Uh, just use like brake cleaner or any engine degreaser and just try to wipe as much as you can off, especially around the water pump area. Um, your gasket is probably gonna be stuck onto the block like mine. Um, just get a razor blade and get most of it off as you wanna make sure that your new water pump gasket um, seals well. Now we can get the camshaft seal back onto the engine. You wanna be very careful when installing this because um, it has like an outer ring inside of this seal and it could come out if you don't put the seal on correctly. So just uh, slowly work it in and just rotate it just to make sure that it does not come out and kind of just drive it in like that. Rotate it in. Once it's in fully, should be good and we should be able to press it back in there, so. And now, push it in. Now get the bolts that go to the camshaft seal housing. And that's how we're gonna drive it in. And now just get the 10 millimeter and just start working one side in and then start doing the other side. The torque for these two bolts are 7.4 foot pounds or 10 newton meters. Right there. Now it's time to install the new camshaft sprocket. It has a guide right there, which goes onto the camshafts. Now obviously once you get your sprocket on, make sure that the TDC mark is aligned with the mark right here on the head. Now as far as the bolt that goes onto the camshaft, I'm actually not gonna be tightening it um, all the way. I'm just gonna put it on there and just give it a few turns. And then once we actually have um, the belt on, um, I'm gonna actually torque it down a spec. So we'll just do that later on. So we don't just risk uh, moving the camshaft while we have the belt off and then just mess all this stuff up. So. Just a few turns just to hold the camshaft sprocket. And that's good enough. Now it's time to install the water pump. Just make sure you put on your gasket the right way. I mean, it only goes on one way, so they're pretty user friendly, but um, just get your gasket on there and just get one bolt started so um, the gasket is held in place. Now I'm gonna to torque the bolts for the water pump as well. Um, the torque spec for these are 22 newton meters or 16 foot pounds. Um, it might be different for um, other model E30s, so I'm gonna include a link down below in the description to where you guys can actually find um, the torque spec for most of the bolts that you're gonna find out through the M20 uh, driveline for E30s. So um, just check that out because it might be different for your car, but for this one specifically, I have uh, 13 millimeter bolts and these are actually 22 newton meters or 16 foot pounds. So let's torque these down. And 
now grab the new tensioner that came with the timing belt kit and just uh, hand tighten it for right now. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I actually did not have this guide pin or this spring, but it just got here today in the mail. So um, now we can actually install it. So slide the spring on and then slide it inside of there, inside of the tensioner. And now we can seat it. Just like that. Now we're going to put some tension on this spring. So I'm going to grab this um, sort of pry bar that I got going on and we're going to push the tensioner against the spring and then we're going to tighten up the bolt. All right, so now it's time to get our new belt on, which is pretty exciting, but at the same time, it's a little tricky, but I think we could do it. So to start off, we're gonna go around the crankshaft sprocket first. You gotta make sure that it's actually seated on the teeth correctly. So go underneath the car and just make sure that it's actually sitting properly. And then we're gonna go around to the oil pump sprocket. And from there, we're gonna bring it up to the camshaft sprocket and then try to bring it around the tensioner. So um, let's start off on the bottom. One thing that I realized uh, throughout the process of installing the belt is that I noticed that there was a lot of slack in between the crankshaft sprocket and the oil pump sprocket. So um, the belt right here, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera, but um, it was kind of sitting on this lower timing cover right here. So that's how I realized that there was a lot of slack right there. So I pulled the belt a little bit more and tried to get it like one tooth over to free up the slack that I had right there. Be very careful when pulling it because you don't want to turn the crank. but. And as soon as I did that, I was able to bring it around uh, the camshaft sprocket. And then with a little bit of force, gentle force, I was able to get it around the tensioner. So I would say just look out for the slack that you have in between um, the crankshaft sprocket and the oil pump sprocket and make sure that the belt is not laying on this lower timing cover. Uh, now I have about like a quarter of an inch of a gap. So um, just look out for that. And I think, you know, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward as far as getting the belt on. So. So now we're gonna loosen the adjuster bolt so the spring can set the tension on the belt. So loosen this 13 millimeter bolt right here, but do not remove it. And now we can test the tensioner. That's good right there. Now we're gonna turn the crank two revolutions to stretch out the belt and allow the tensioner to move out as far as possible and just make sure that the belt is moving freely. After turning the crank twice, both TDC marks should be aligned at the same time on the camshaft and on the crankshaft. Now we can tighten up the tensioner bolt. The torque spec for the tensioner bolts is 22 newton meters or 16 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna do the bottom one as well, 16 foot pounds or 22 newton meters. Mine's a 17 millimeter head. I think it might be different for other cars, but Mine's a 17. And before I forget, I'm gonna to torque down the bolt for the camshaft sprocket, which is 65 newton meters or 48 foot pounds.
I'm gonna have to counter hold the crank because it keeps spinning. So I'm just gonna wedge a large 22 millimeter wrench right here at the bottom and it should be good. Now we can start installing the timing covers. We'll start off with the bottom one, which is held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Moving on to the upper timing cover, um, that one's held in by a 10 millimeter bolt on the left and a 13 millimeter bolt on the right. Now we can install the harmonic balancer, which only goes on one way because there's a guide pin for it. So just slide it on there. And now we can install the crankshaft pulley. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm underneath the car right now. So just try to line it up. It's kind of hard because you can't really see anything, but just try to line it up, get one bolt in there and it should be aligned. It doesn't have a specific orientation as long as all the holes just get lined up, should be okay. And then don't forget to get your crank position sensor and mount it on the bracket. Now we can install the water pump pulley. The torque for the water pump pulley bolts are 10 newton meters or 7.4 foot pounds. Now we can do the accessory belts, which in my opinion, um, I don't think they were designed that well in the M20. Um, you know, the teeth, they kind of suck, they strip over time. So just look at the teeth on your brackets. If they're really worn out, you might need to replace them. I think mine are okay. They might survive, I'm not sure. So we're gonna see right now, but um, I think like every bracket is probably worth like 30 bucks. So it's kind of expensive to replace all the brackets on this engine and as well as, you know, getting the new bolts as well. But um, we'll just give it a shot. So we'll just install the bracket. This is the main drive belt, the V-belt, the longest one. So we'll start off by um, getting it underneath the harmonic balancer. And then it goes around the water pump and the water pump pulley and the alternator pulley. I'm gonna take this bolt off and see if it'll make it a little easier to get the belt on. There it is. The way that I was able to get the belt on pretty easy is I put it around the harmonic balancer first and then I got it on the alternator pulley. And then you're not gonna be able to put the belt on fully on the water pump pulley, but just put it on the edge, that's gonna be okay. And then just start rotating the pulley itself with your hand counterclockwise and it'll kind of just drive on the belt and it should go on there pretty easy. Now we can grab the adjustment bolt and slide it right in. And then also install the nut that goes onto the stud in front of the upper timing cover. So now as far as getting tension on the belt, um, this could be a little bit tricky because there's no exact spec as far as um, like the perfect tension of this belt. It's kind of just trial and error. Turn it on, if it's squealing too much, it's probably too loose. Um, you never want to go too tight um, because it is a new belt, so you just want to be extra careful with it, not overstretch it. Um, this is pretty tight. I want to say that's pretty good right there. So um, as soon as you're holding the tension on the belt, um, go ahead and uh, tighten up the bolt in the back. So grab your 13 millimeter and just tighten it up. I think that's pretty reasonable right there. Um, I don't think it's too tight, has a little bit of movement. I think that's gonna be like the perfect spot for it. So um, if it is too loose for whatever reason, which I don't think it would, um, I'll just make the adjustment later. And that's really the key with this. There's no exact spec as far as getting the perfect tension on it. And then also don't forget to tie in the bolt that holds the bracket to the upper timing cover. It's a 13 millimeter. 
Now we can do the AC belt, which uh, just make sure you pay attention uh, what belt you're actually getting because um, the power steering one is like a very, very similar size to this one. So just make sure you get the correct size belt for um, the AC compressor. But we're gonna put it on the crankshaft pulley and then we're gonna slide it on to the AC compressor, which shouldn't be that hard. Just like that. And if we need to turn it, just go ahead and uh, turn it counterclockwise and it should slide on the belt. There it is. Belt's on. Now we just need to get the adjuster at the bottom. All right, so I figured I might as well just knock out the power steering belt as well. So I'm just gonna slide it onto the crankshaft pulley and then we'll slide it onto the power steering pump. Just like that. I'm gonna knock out the adjustment on the belt for uh, the power steering pump since it's right here, the adjuster bolt's right there. So um, using a 19 millimeter wrench, just place it over the adjustment bolt and then uh, we're gonna turn it clockwise to put more tension on it. So the key is again, to not go too tight. So just kind of just get a feel of the belt and see, I think that's pretty good right there. So I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but um, has just a little bit of slack, not too tight, but also not too loose. Once you have it exactly where you want it, um, just go ahead and uh, tighten the bolt in front of it with a 13 millimeter socket. And then also don't forget to tighten all the other bolts because I know I loosened up a few of them. So just make sure all of them are tight. I'll get those from the bottom right now. All right, so now moving on to the AC compressor here at the bottom of the car. So um, it's the same thing. It's a 19 millimeter. Go ahead and uh, turn it clockwise until we get the tension that we need a little bit more. And that's pretty good right there. So now Grab your 13 millimeter and tighten the nut on the back and that'll be done. And then also same thing, don't forget to tie in all the other bolts that we took off or loosened up throughout the process of uh, doing this. Back on top of the engine, we can get our um, distributor cap and rotor um, back on there. So just don't forget to put this uh, dust shield back on and then get the rotor back on, which is held in by uh, three three millimeter Allen bolts. And it's held on by these uh, three uh, eight millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna stop recording right here. Um, I have a whole bunch of other stuff that I still have to do, um, get the intake manifold back on. I just replaced like a whole bunch of coolant hoses, fuel lines, intake manifold gasket, thermostat housing gasket, uh, new thermostat, new oil return tube. I did a whole bunch of other maintenance. I also messed around with the brake booster, refreshed it as well. I kind of just went the extra mile and I just did a lot more other maintenance because this is gonna be my daily. So, you know, I don't want it to break down. But I mean, at this point, you just get your plugs back on there install your uh, fan clutch, get the radiator back on, install the coolant hoses, and um, just all that basic other stuff as far as completing it. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish everything up and just get everything reassembled. And then I'll show you guys a first start of the car once I have everything back all in one piece. Let's give it the first start.
initial startup right there. Um, took a little while to start in the beginning because I replaced all the fuel hoses and I had the fuel rail off the car so the engine didn't have any fuel at the time that I cranked it. But as soon as the fuel got over, um, it fired up right away and it sounds really good. So the timing belt job is done. If this video helped you out. Please make sure you guys drop a like. Um, it took me a really, really long time to film this. It took me about like three weeks to record the entire process of the timing belt. And that's just including, you know, getting the intake manifold back on there and all the other parts that I was replacing along the way. But most importantly, I really took my time to make sure that I captured the best angles for you guys and I explained everything to the best of my ability. So if there's anything that's questionable, anything that you guys have doubts about, uh, drop a comment down below and I'll try to help out everybody um, as much as I can. So I want to show you guys that the car actually starts and that everything was just done correctly. So um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, reassemble the rest of it, get all the new uh, coolant hoses back on there, get the radiator back on and hopefully have this thing on the floor pretty soon. But um, please drop a like if this video really helped you guys out and I'll see you guys in the next video and subscribe if you guys are new, if you guys want to see a lot more E30 content and I'll catch you guys in the next videos.